Good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on when you're watching this. This will be my last response video to the responses of the responses of the... No, well, you get the picture. Um, I can't keep up one person, and I don't mind setting aside like an hour a day, but I can't keep up even with an hour a day. And so uh, and it's, there has been some pretty... Uh, there's been some pretty hateful comments, which is, you know, one thing, but if I allow it to sit on the channel, it's not good. It doesn't hurt my feelings in particular, uh, but it's not good for discourse. Number two, a lot of people just keep repeating the same things over and over again, and even some of the arguments today I'm going to make are going to be repeating the same thing over and over again, so we're not having meaningful dialogue of any sort. Uh, and... Number three, I don't think a lot of people really care to have a discourse. They just want to keep shouting into the wind over and over and over again <clears throat> and whatever have you. Uh, I said at the beginning of the first video or at the end that you are always welcome to reach out to me on Discord. So before any of you go, oh, he shut off the comments, he's running away, whatever. My Discord is always out there for you guys to come and join me. And uh, you can you can join me at JC Servant. Very easy to find me on Discord at J C S E R V for Victor A N for Nancy T for Tom. J C Servant, just like it is here on the channel. It's J C Servant. You can go to Discord. You can friend me. One of you has done it, and we've had some very good conversations. Everybody else, you just want to keep yelling and screaming in the channel. Some of you, some of you are more polite, but you're kind of repeating the same things over and over again. There's a few of you that just left one good comment and have just kind of left it at that, or two comments, or a couple of responses, and that's great too. So I'm going to do one more kind of go through it all video, uh, and maybe in the future I'll do another one of these. Uh, I think this is very interesting. It's definitely a way to get people to look at your channel. I've had more views and more comments on this. <clears throat> well, comments in particular, more comments than any other video I've done put together, and like I said, I've done a few videos. Uh, haven't exceeded, I think, in terms of views. I, I, I don't care about any of that stuff anyways, but it's just, to me, it's a curiosity. It's kind of interesting. I really thought, you know, I have a lot of videos out there that maybe have 10 views, 20 views, 30 views. I thought this would be in that vicinity because it was just made for a couple of people in particular. And I figured if you're an atheist and you've heard all these arguments before, you no doubt probably have, why would you even bother? Why, why would you bother? Uh, I guess that's one of my big questions <clears throat> for all of you. We'll be able to answer because the comment sections will be turned off. But you can, like I said, you can always hit me up on Discord. But I, I, I wonder if you um, are so, uh, if you've already got your mind made up about all this stuff, and most of you do, why are you coming in here to do these attacks, these ad hominem type of things, deals, and, and just to comment and just scream and yell into the wind and, and whatever have you. You don't truly want answers. If you're truly trying to change my mind out of concern, which is admirable if that's what your intentions are, then you would want to take the extra step to come on the Discord. See, I care about your, your souls, so I'm willing to put in the effort to make a string of videos and put my Discord handle out there and put myself out there publicly to engage anybody in thoughtful one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to move forward from the screen of anonymity uh, and and say, hey, my name is Phil, and let's sit down and, like adults and let's have a good conversation and see if we can come and reason together. Be happy to do that with anybody. The vast majority of people, it seems to me anyways, just want to come and yell and scream and, you know, or repeat their same points over and over again behind the internet screen of anonymity and and that's fine that's your prerogative i don't think everyone should want have to or want to have to or whatever uh come and hunt me down and and, and hang out with me on discord and try to talk me out of it your time may be too valuable you have too many things going on you got a family to take care of other things or whatever have you that is fine but then why even come on here and just leave a you know, uh, you know the, these kinds of comments, especially when they're over and over, you're clearly putting a bunch of time to it. It's a bit of a disconnect there. With that being said, 
uh, I'm going to go through these uh, comments, all the new comments one more time, comments I haven't responded to. I don't know if I'm going to get through every one of them because quite frankly, they've, they've been quite a, quite a few and we don't want the video to be five hours long. But it is Saturday. I do have a little bit more time than I normally have. So we will see how far I get through before I just get tired talking about it. Uh, and then I'll turn off the comments when while this is processing and getting uploaded. And you're more than welcome to, again, come and talk to me on Discord if you wish to have further, further discourse uh, on the matter. I would love to talk to you. Uh, if, uh, I've, I've never really had a bad experience from talking to somebody on Discord because it turns out when people are talking voice for the most part, they act like adults. And if they ever don't, uh, you can always hang up on somebody on Discord and then quickly add them to your ignore list. But I've never really had to do that uh, here uh, because of these kinds of invitations. So I'm happy to take that particular risk. So with that being said, let's get into the comments. Okay, so let's get this party started. Uh, why not? So here is the uh, here's the unanswered comment. So we'll uh, we'll go through and, and talk about these. What if your book is a fiction? Uh, you know, every Christian, of course, you know, faith is is something you kind of struggle with and stuff, especially when you're first learning about everything. And I will say, of course, the question has come across my head, head a few times. There's a lot of reasons why we don't consider the book uh, just a pure work of an, uh, an, an antique fiction. Uh, there is a book out there called The Case for Christ. Uh, I believe it's by Josh McDowell. You can go and check that out on Amazon. It's like yay thick, and it goes through all of the evidences uh, for the Bible. It's reliability, not only as a historical document and that what we have today is what was written back then. Of course, that doesn't prove that any of it's true. It just means that what we have is, is accurate to what was originally written. But there is also a lot of detail in there about why you can trust and believe in the Bible. So I highly recommend if you truly care about truth and as such uh, to check out that document as it goes through each piece of the evidence behind uh, the Bible. But there's definitely been times in my life where I have struggled uh, back and forth with some of those answers, uh, particularly after reading some of the strong atheistic arguments and stuff when I was younger and didn't know uh, some of the answers to those things. Uh, it, it could definitely cause you to look at me and go, well, what if, what if, what if, uh, and, and what not have you. Uh, so I don't believe, uh, in this case, in my, at this point in my life, after doing all the research, I, I simply don't believe that's a, a possibility anymore. But for the sake of the argument, uh, so to speak, if it is a fiction, then, uh, then, then I still feel like that because of the changes in my life, that you know, that my life has been better, better led. Since if the book's not true and there's not a God. I don't have any moral remorses because I'm not going to be held to account for anything. When I'm dead, I'm not going to care about anything, right? If there's no God, there's no one who's going to judge me, there's no afterlife, then nothing we do on this earth truly, truly matters. Uh, some atheists like to claim, hey, but, you know, there, there's still a moral standard and you should feel guilty about stuff or whatever have you. But honestly, if there's no God, I honestly don't see why I would. Well, there's even if there were reasons for me to feel guilty about some of the stuff I've done, I, I, I don't know why I would care after I'm dead. So uh, I'm not going to care that I uh, wasted so much time in this hypothetical situation uh, preaching God to other people, whatever have you. So uh, I, 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 I'm not even going to care and look back and go, gosh, I wish I spent more time playing video games or whatever instead of uh, responding you know, and, and answering questions about the Bible. So I, I, I don't, I don't think, I, you know, in fact, there's, uh, I forget what it's called, the Pascal Wager, I think, or something like that, which says, you know, the thing is, if, if I'm wrong about Christianity, I've really lost nothing. If I'm wrong about atheism, <laughs> if I'm an atheist, I'm wrong about atheism, uh, when I die, that I've lost my soul. So, uh, you know, there's always that. Uh, but, Christianity and walk with God has uh, has really helped my walk here on earth, my relationships with other people for the most part, 
uh, my my walk with my wife and the such, I wouldn't trade that for uh, anything. So I, I don't really have a lot of regrets. Sam Dummick says, I don't believe in God because I have no reason to. If he actively plays a role in things now, why doesn't he do anything worth doing? Well, see, you've made a, a value judgment. It's your opinion uh, that he hasn't done anything worth doing. And if you presuppose that God exists, then then you're judging God, which is never a very smart decision. Uh, he's created the world around us. He's created you. He's created me. You have life because of him. Uh, you have a, a world to live in with many, many blessings because of him and whatever have you. Uh, th these are all things uh, that you have that you could be thankful for. Bless your own life and, and whatever. Just because you know some of the mechanics of how this stuff works, thanks to you know science and whatever have you, does not uh, does not address the, the fact that God is the one who set it all in motion. And he's the one that sustains it, and he's the one that blesses it. So he's doing something all the time, my friend. You just refuse to acknowledge it, and that's that's your prerogative uh, while you're here on earth and such. I don't worship God because I'm a better person than he is. You know, this is this is definitely a, a common theme that I see, at least you're honest about it, that I see with, with a lot of atheists um, and, and in my own family in particular. Uh, one of my relatives who who died a number of years ago is is you know is uh, it was really interesting to me the this one relative that was dying uh, i'll tell you this story here uh i i called up and i spoke with the spouse and uh the husband and i said can i talk to her and she's like he's like let me check and he comes back he says that's fine but she knows you like to talk about religion so don't talk about religion and i said okay i'll just see how she's doing so i talked to her on the phone and she uh she we talked about finances and stuff for a while in stock market but then she just cut in and said you know what i hate about christianity that there's a lot of good people out there and according to christianity they're all going to hell if they don't put their faith in god and i don't think that's good and here's why she went on and on about you know her value judgments of god and i listened and it was very clear to me that she hated god she hated God. It really kind of lends credence to that saying that C.S. Lewis says that the, the, the gates from hell are locked from within. So I uh, I listened to it all, and I said, those are some really interesting points. Those are some very good points. Would you like a response to those points? And she said, no. I said, okay, I respect that. And I didn't talk to her, uh, you know, uh, the, I did get an opportunity to talk to her again. Uh, sadly, she, she passed away not long after that. But it definitely kind of um, it explained some of this uh, whole thing here, some of the sentiment that's out there. If I'm able to help another person anyway, just once in my life, that's more than God has done to help anyone throughout all of history. Wow, that's, a, that's an awfully uh, bold claim there. Uh, and whatnot. And I can thoroughly uh, say that I thoroughly disagree. Thoroughly say that I thoroughly, I can just say I have to thoroughly disagree with that, obviously. Um, Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Uh, and uh, last time I checked, you haven't died for anybody because you're still talking here, unless it happened like in the last nine hours. Some people in the comments claim that nobody has ever taken the morality from the Bible. That is certainly uh, not true. Uh, right, I can agree with that. I mean, Christians, Jews, and the such definitely base a lot of their ethics on the Bible. A major example is Soren Kierkegaard, who basically put forth the analysis that God is a raging prick. But because he's God, whatever he does is moral by definition. So under Kierkegaard's philosophy, the Holocaust is moral because God can do anything and he chose to allow it to happen. Um, so if... If um, there is there is a book by C.S. Lewis that addresses this, why is there evil in the world? Why is there wrong in the world? And I forget the exact title. I'm racking my head for the exact title. You can probably find it easily enough. That talks about why God allows evil in the world. And Lecrae put it put it really well. You know, if you want him to stop all evil around the world, if your argument is that God should stop all evil in the world, do you want him to stop it at the murder level? or the stealing level, or the thinking level. Because you can't, you can't 
you can't have it both ways. God is an extremely holy God. His ways are much higher than ours. So for him, every sin is incredibly offensive, and that includes the, the you know thoughts and, and everything else that, where the thoughts are turned away from him. So do you want him to stop it all, right? Or you, you just want him to stop this, and other people just want him to stop this. He does limit the evil uh, on this world. That's why there are governments in place. He has put restraining factors on earth. The Bible talks about this. You're unhappy because if you were in charge, you would definitely use different restraining levels because you are on a much higher ethical standard. You're just so just. You're you're a, you're a justice warrior. Um, by definition, yes, God is more holy and, and 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 knows a lot more about ethics than you do, and that's what's hard for people. That's what's hard for atheists to wrap their their head around. Um, God can't do evil by definition. It's and that doesn't give him a free pass, by the way, to do anything and everything that he wants. It's a statement about his character. He doesn't do uh, evil. Uh, and why not? He's a deeply disturbed man, but also successful as a philosopher and influential over various c Christian denominations. God is a deeply so that's that's pretty heretical right there. User unknown says, spoken like a true fanatic. Well, thank you. I'd, I'd like to think of myself as a, a fan of Jesus Christ, so I'll, I'll take that. The Ori and Stargate are not a standard for true Christianity. It's a warning against blind faith, not faith itself. Um, uh, yeah, I've addressed this several times. I'll address it one more time. I wasn't the one who w originally had said this 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 clip directly uh, is is an atheist argument that that's a that's a counter argument to christianity this was given to me by a friend she was the one who said i've listened to what you've said phil i don't agree with you i'm not a great speaker but this video is my is is the best response it kind of really leads a lot in my life okay so for her in the context of a christian conversation this frames her her opinion on the subject matter. So it turns out that there are quite a few people who in their own way see this as a pro-atheist argument or a contra-religion slash contra-Christian counter-Christian argument or both. So I didn't, I am not making the argument that the developers and the writers of Stargate were purposely doing this as an anti-Christian or even an anti-worldly religion argument. Maybe they were, maybe they won't. There's definitely a lot of points, as I pointed out in my original video, that correspond strongly with at least the Christian religion. I can't speak for the others, but I can speak for Christianity. I've studied the Bible many years. You can sit there and say, um, I've got an alien. And he's going to argue with this character. And he's going to argue these points about philosophy. But, hear me out, he's not arguing Christianity. However, the points of philosophy have some common characteristics with Christianity. That's, that means it's, it's if it's a rose by another name, it, it smells just as sweet. Uh, I'm not certainly, um, I'm saying that there are some characteristics in that argument that are definitely relatable to Christianity. I'm not saying they're perfect representations for Christianity. I'm, I'm certainly not. Uh, there's definitely a lot of reasons why he, and I point those out in the video, why he's not exactly a stand-in for God or anything along those lines. But a lot of people who watch this video see it as if the Ori is the stand-in for an angel or for God or whatever have you. Okay, whether or not that was what the writers intended, that's what people have done because they're adjacent. They're that close that people just blur the lines and go over there, okay? So when you guys are like yelling at me and saying, hey, you do know that the Ori aren't God, I understand that. If I honestly thought that Stargate was purposely attacking, you know, Christianity and was using God and an angel and all this jazz, I wouldn't watch the show. It'd be too offensive to me. I agree with you guys, right? But this isn't the way a lot of people view it. 
And because these shows are so pro-humanistic, which is counter to the Christian belief system, they're going to present it in that light as being the positive solution to the problems that are at hand. And because the solution being humanism is factually um, counter to the Christian argument, it, it is one of the things, as I mentioned in the original video, that, that has fed into the movement uh, towards atheism that we've seen in this country, in particular in the last 30 years, has really ramped up. It's not solely responsible. I've heard comments of like, oh my gosh, Phil, you're giving Stargate way too much credit. I, I, I get it. I get it. Okay. There was many other shows like this. There were comedies. There were dramas. And there were plenty of other sci-fi shows. The sci-fi shows really focused on the humanistic side of the argument. Other shows focused on other sides of the argument. And sci-fi shows were not the biggest mover and shaker of our society and our culture. With that being said, I've watched a lot of sci-fi. I've watched a lot of sci-fi over the years. Uh, I, I grew up and grew old watching, you know, Star Trek and Stargate and, and the such. So... This is the part of the culture that I know and I can best relate to. So that, that's why I take this on and other things. If God takes us sooner than later, though people through people murdering other people, this is his prerogative. That's a really disturbing uh, concept. Yeah, well, again, God, God's ways aren't our ways. And it's not murder, it's judgment. Okay, so murder is the unlawful taking of life. Okay. Um, I think we have capital punishment in the state of Utah. The, if, if you are found guilty of grand crimes, uh, especially the taking of other life and, and, and some really heinous stuff, the government has the right to execute you. Many governments do. Um, that is not murder. That is capital punishment, right? And the executioner who pulls the switch is not a murderer. He's doing his job. When soldiers defend America, and they're you know they're defending the country, that's that's country defense, that's self defense, that's not cold blooded murder. So when God exercises His right as the eternal judge over everything, He's not murdering people. I'm sorry, but what you got here is a straw man argument. Uh, you have to you know when you argue against the Christian God, you have to presuppose the Christian arguments that are in the Bible, which is God is the judge. He's the judge of all the universe. He's the one who is not only uh, worthy of judging us uh, because he is the only, he is perfect, he is holy, but he is also omnipotent and omniscient. And so he knows exactly who is truly evil, who is truly guilty for their sins, and who's just putting on a good show. So let's see here. For your argument around three minutes, I was reminded of the lease on life. I'm not really sure what that applies to. Think Apple idiot. Now, this guy right here might have been the guy I deleted some comments from because he was swearing a lot, and that's not very respectful. Swear words don't really offend me very much. I don't get very offended. As you can tell, I'm pretty even keeled, but... Uh, it, it isn't good for the community. And it's clearly a sign. And in, in, in the context of that he was using it, it was clearly a sign of, of disrespect. If you yell out, um, um, I won't use a swear word on YouTube because I don't want to get de de I don't want to say demonetized. I'd not monetize at all. But I don't want to get uh, banned or whatever. I don't want to cause any problems. So, But so I'm going to use a fudge. Everyone likes to use fudge in Utah as the standard word. But if I say, fudge, yeah, after doing a big hit in a video game or whatever have you nobody's offended by that so you can do that all day long in my games i don't care when you go up to somebody and you say fudge you and you mean it that's very rude but you could also say you idiot or you're an imbecile and that is just as bad in my opinion but um and i believe that's what the, the bible teaches you didn't watch stargate but you just had to white knight christianity those poor poor modern christians that have been only the most capitalist, most powerful organization last 2,000 years, stronger than any country. Um, uh, okay, I, I didn't realize I was pulling the boo-hoo, poor Christianity. 
I, I, I feel like it's a straw man argument. I don't, don't think that's what I was doing um, at all or whatever have you. Uh, I don't know if Christianity has really been the most powerful organization. When I look at the number of people that have been killed in Tiamat Square in China, for example, I'm pretty sure that they did a lot more than the Crusades. And I would argue that the Crusades weren't really Christian. They were just, you know, Christian in name only. We see a lot of people, as I mentioned in another video response, we see a lot of people who kill in the name of atheism. We see a lot of people who kill in the name of Islam. We see a lot of people who kill in the name of different religions who really don't represent the other people of those organizations. So unless you want me to attribute the mass murders of some of these people who are atheists, who have claimed to be atheists, to all of atheism, I suggest you be a little careful about saying that someone says they're Christian and has done some crusades and killed a few thousand people or whatever, um, that you kind of you kind of think that one through. Uh, why moral systems have improved over Christianity? Why do you think we have slavery more? First of all, why do you even think slavery is bad without Christianity? Like, uh, it's really hard to make a strong ethical argument outside of, of religion. It really comes down to your personal set of preferences. It's what you prefer. You prefer there to be slavery. You know, uh, 200 years ago, the majority thought there should be slavery. Uh, that's what the majority wanted. Uh, nowadays, the majority uh, wants really weird things like um, uh, the the you know some of the cultural movements that we've seen, some of the cultural changes that we've seen. What if the what if the majority wakes up one day and says we want to start using other pronouns for people, things like that? I, I don't think not everything society has come up with is is a positive thing at all. So. Brother, don't make more videos. Don't talk to anyone about faith. Please read some books and stop thinking about your indoctrination. Oops, I've done it again. I've created another video. I hope it's not a sin. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. A uh, little dry humor there. Yeah, no, I, this will be the last video here for now. I will make more videos in the future. This has been very fascinating. And I have other priorities I do have to get to, uh, other jobs that I'm being paid to do that I need to focus on. This doesn't pay diddly. Uh, this is, you know, out of service uh, to God, but uh, I do have other things I need to to get to. So I, I will be uh, putting this on hiatus uh, here when I suspend all the comments and the such. I just, um, I know if I just step away and whatever, people are going to be like, oh, he, he doesn't, he, he didn't answer us, so... Uh, your analogies are not analogies. They are lies crafted to empower Christianity. Well, uh, you you believe what you want to believe there. I think you're spouting a, a whole bunch of, of of lies here, too. I'd love to t hear Christians talk about how amazing attributes of their God, but when I want to hold their God responsible for the horrific and moral actions clearly described in the Holy Book, how dare I judge God? Um, I, I feel like that's sarcasm. I almost feel like that's sarcasm. There's might be a little. Of course it's not. Okay. So how dare you judge God? Um, because God can see people's hearts. God can see the future. God can see every possibility. And God is the only one who can perfectly judge people, number one. Number two... He's the only one who can make sure that they go to the right place, whether it's eternity with him in heaven or eternally separated from him in hell. So he's the one who can, he, he's the only one who knows if someone is taken early, that's a, a, he's also the only one who's qualified to say you dying early is a good thing or it's a bad thing. You're not qualified to say that. I'm not qualified to say that. Because from the Christian perspective, life is eternal. We never truly pass away. We essentially transition from one step to another uh, and whatnot. So when, when a child matures into an adult, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, because we've all been both children and adults, we look back and we say, that's a good thing. It's a natural process. It's good. It's healthy. It's part of the maturing process. You become a better person when you become an adult, right? Well, what happens when you go from being, you know, in a, in a, an adult to an old person? Is that good or bad? Well, you get some more wisdom. 
but you also get a lot of physical frailties and you're more susceptible to sickness and illness and such. So most people think that's bad. Some people, the visions, uh, you know, uh, opinions are a little more divided on that. What happens when you go from old person to death? Well, the thing is, none of us have been dead that are still talking about it here on Earth. How can you truly say that dying and going in, you know, is is necessary for for some people. They'll tell you even now while they're alive, they think it's a good thing because they're suffering in pain. They're living horrible, miserable lives. That's why some people commit suicide because they become convinced that death is a better alternative, right? So only God is the person who could really say it would be better if this person came straight to heaven rather than lived another 50 years on earth because he knows what's over here waiting for them. He knows what he has prepared for them. That's aside from the fact that he's the one who gave us life, but he doesn't give us life for all, you know, when it comes to our physical bodies. He gave us these bodies. He doesn't give us these bodies for all time. We all know we have a lease on life, and he has the right to call in that lease early. You don't. I don't. He does. We don't have the right to take another human being's life outside of, like, self-defense or something like that. But we don't have the right to unilaterally just take another person's life. But he can do that because he has the authority to not only judge that person perfectly, but to see the future and make that value judgment of whether being brought into the afterlife sooner is a good thing or a bad thing. And you only have to read the Bible to know that the people who go to heaven think it's an absolutely good thing, and they don't want to go back to earth. People who go to hell might have a different opinion. First of all, I don't believe your stories, so I'm not judging your God. Uh, you know, well, you just said, how dare I judge God, so make up your mind. Your refusal to see the difference is your problem, not a me problem. Well... What, what you're doing is when you say how, you know, how dare I judge God, that implies that you've been judging God in your previous statements. Now, I've, I've got all these statements in a row uh, from a lot of different people, and I, I haven't been able to parse through who has said what. So I'm going to go with the with the idea, just based on your own statement there, that you are strongly implying that you have indeed done one of these statements here that are value judgments against God. And such a statement, like God didn't have the right to kill those people, presupposes that the Bible is accurate. It's a presuppositional argument. So um, you have to presuppose the God of the Bible in order to make that statement is alive and true and all that other fun jazz. So that's why I, I, I argue against some of the statements here saying God is a monster because of course these people are saying they don't believe God exists. But they're listing over and over again, and I assume you're one of them just because you said, how dare I judge God, that one of the reasons they say they, 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 they don't believe in God is because if you go with the presuppositional idea that the God of the Bible is true, and you presuppose what the Bible says is true, the Bible's made it clear he has executed holy judgment on people, uh, in, including, quote-unquote, innocent people you know, and the such by using the Israelites. Uh, that's aside from his pests, or the pests, the famines, the, the swords, all this other stuff that he has in the Bible. He's passed judgment on the Israelites numerous times and has, you know, allowed, you know, or done bad things to them. He either allows the Canaanites to come and kill them or take them over or whatever have you and things like that, or he sends, you know, plagues in or whatever the deal may be. Um, so the it's a common atheistic argument. I can't believe in that God because of particularly the God of the Old Testament is really nasty, even though uh, the New Testament Jesus does some pretty deadly things as well. That's a presuppositional argument. So the reason why you hear me bringing this up and using the analogies and telling the stories and telling the Bible stories and going over this same subject over and over again is because you guys bring it up over and over again. And that's fine. I'm happy to talk about it. Speaking of, if you don't, if you're not just trying to do quick drive-by shooting attacks, and you truly want to have a thoughtful conversation, again, you are welcome to friend me on Discord. I'm at JC Servant, and I'm happy to have one-on-one -on -one conversations. One of you has done that, and we've had some really great conversations. A lot of you um, have not. Christi Christ Christianism, 
I would say would just be called Christianity, has, mis has been misrepresented in such a disgraceful manner across media. Jesus himself has stopped his followers from enacting an act of intolerance against non-believers that rejected Jesus and his message, and his message, I'm guessing, says that you shall not prosecute. Um, I don't know of an act of intolerance, violence. I mean, he stopped Peter when Peter cut off the guy's ear with the sword when they were arresting Jesus. Peter was going to resort to violence, and, and Jesus told him to cut that out and heal the guy's ear. Uh, and the message in the Bible is that uh, when it comes to spreading the, the gospel message of Jesus Christ, that we are not to resort to violence. We are to preach the gospel, and we will suffer violence. As I mean, I think some of these people on here might even... Might, might, might feel very violent towards me, or at least very angry, um, but that that is part of being a, a, a Christian. But, uh, but we are not to be doing a lot of violence. So that's why I say the Crusaders uh, are not, uh, we're not representing Christianity. They may not be Christian. I don't know if they are or not. That's between them and God, but I would say they don't represent Christianity well, because Christianity is very clear. Christian teachings are extremely clear. You can read the Bible for yourself. The Christians themselves are not to try to persuade others um, by using um, violence or whatever have you. People jump to the conclusion that devoted Christians are evil because they follow the grossly out of context text shared online by Reddit Midwits. Uh, you know, it, it turns out that even back in the medieval times and other times in history, People have taken God's word out of context and use it as a cudgel in order to do evil, violent things. It turns out people are evil. News, I know, shocking, terribly. People are evil. And evil people do not need a lot of reasons to do evil things, but they like to have one anyways. So they will take something they don't like and turn it into a reason. I'm going to go kill these people because their skin color is different than me. I'm going to I'm going to go after, you know, this political person and try to shoot him because I don't like what he's saying. Uh, there, there, people, people just need, you know, I saw a lot of politicians after Trump was shot at. A lot of politicians say, well, this is because we keep the temperature up in the room because of what we're saying about each other and the parties and whatever. It's no wonder somebody shot. I'm like, what? That's insane. The guy who shot at Trump and the guy who shoots at anybody like that needs to be held responsible. He's dead now, so it doesn't matter, but he needs to be convicted and held responsible. doesn't matter if someone told him something in the past or whatever have you. Your actions are your actions, and you can't blame it on, on, on something, even if it was inflammatory. Uh, we all know this. The, the Bible in no way, shape, or form encourages Christians to try to force others to believe through violence. And in fact, it does the exact opposite. It warns against that sort of thing. But that won't stop people from taking some verses out of context and using that as some sort of excuse as to why they swept over the land and shot people. That's, that's twisted psychopaths for you. So you don't serve Yahweh? Why just serve the number two in your pantheon? You could go even lower and serve one of the archangels. Oh, sarcasm. Uh, yes, we serve Yahweh. Thank you for ask, uh, um, asking. Yes, we do serve Yahweh. It's easy. There's not a pantheon. There's one guy. There. Let me explain to you the trinity. Reading your nickname, I can say that you're a Jamaican white and also a man. Are you not three persons or just one? You need to start calling your God trinity then. By the same logic, I should start calling you that too. You realize my username is a description, not a name, right? I, I, okay, uh, you guys are being silly here. Uh, but yes, the, the Trinitarian concept is the idea that God is, you know, uh, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're three distinct, yet also one entity and the such. So. Uh, there are all kinds of the books that uh, describe the Trinity uh, concept and the verses that back that up. Um, I've watched this because I'm a fan of Stargate. The problem is that you label your God as all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-benevolent. 
Right, you're missing one thing, though. All holy justice is an important part of God's composition. If your God has these three omni trees in Christianity, it makes no sense for Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve, knowing that they would eat from the tree of good and evil despite his commandment, yet punished them knowing they were going to do this. Why were they not made incapable of disobeying this one commandment? Um, so the Bible, uh, I, I don't believe necessarily, oh boy, we've got a lot here. Okay, this might be the the the, the last one here because um, I was going to go back a day anyways. We got things that go back more than that, but I think I've I've gone through a lot of Gemma's and Persona non gratis in other videos, so I think this will be a good one to end on since it's being since it's a doozy uh, and whatnot. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so. I'm personally not the biggest fan of of saying for a fact those things that the Bible doesn't state for a fact. God doesn't explain everything to us no more than a parent explains everything to their child. When a five-year-old comes up and says to the parents, where do babies come from? Most parents will not get into a dissertation on the exact mechanics of how that comes about. Uh, they'll use a euphemism. They'll use an analogy. Um, or whatever they or they'll say come back later in about you know uh, 10 years <laughs> but the um uh, and god has chosen to remain silent on some subjects i can tell you that many notable christian writers have taken a stab in this including the notable c.s lewis who goes into the problem of of evil and why did God allow these things to happen? Why does God allow suffering? I highly suggest that if you guys are truly intellectually honest, that you check out some of these Christian writings that I've quoted to you today. Uh, they're definitely worth checking out and, and see what that, that well thought out Christian argument. The very, very short version that I won't do justice to, to some of these is number one, um, the, uh, the, the, you, you, one, one Christian argument is that you don't have a demonstration of love without some sort of free will or free choice to some extent. So if God simply made a whole bunch of robots that followed him and never sinned and were basically, you know, uh, a strong and moral nature as God, then you don't have a demonstration anywhere of true love. So th that is one possibility. I, I don't know if it's true. I, I don't think there's a lot of biblical text supporting these ideals because, again, God kind of remains a bit silent, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, there is a, another one. Uh, that, that, I'm trying to remember this other theory I had heard. Light shines best in the darkness. God is God is is a light, and but you need you need darkness to, for that light to to really shine. So we have, uh, therefore, uh, we have classic good versus evil. There's a couple of theories that are out there, and I encourage you to, to check them out. But the fact that we don't have, for a fact, a clear answer to this, this question, um, we just have some hints in the Bible and the such, uh, does not disprove uh, Christianity. Uh, if your child doesn't know exactly where babies come from and your parent refuses to answer you, it doesn't, doesn't mean that babies aren't born. Why were they in the same place and the tree as the first place? It was a test. Now, one thing the Bible makes very, very clear is that was purposely set up, obviously, as a test. Same with all of humanity. An all-knowing power loving God could easily create a people that had free will yet never committed sin or harm to each other. Um, well, I mean, how would you enforce that? So you got to understand, God's ways are much higher than ours. If he created, a, a, let's say, a perfect system where you simply couldn't commit physical acts of sin, there would certainly be less pain and suffering, but that wouldn't truly stop sin because in God's worldview, sin can even be at the, you know, at the thinking level and the such, right? So, um, and if you have, if you hate your brother, that isn't a harmonious place you want to live in. He's never physically able to hit you or even swear at you because God has these magical rules in place. He waves his magic wand. Um, I, I Does it hurt more to know somebody hates you but won't be honest with you about it? You know, like you get into this really kind of deep stuff here. The only way to truly stop all sin is to stop it at the thinking level. That's, that's the Lecrae song argument. You can check it out. 
Uh, Lecrae did, did some good music. I don't know if he still does. It's called Truth. It's a song called Truth. You should really check it out. But um, with that being said, uh, if you stop it at the thinking level, you've got robots. Uh, let's see here. The problem of evil is a very real stumbling block for Christianity and other religions that claim their God is all-powerful and benevolent. Again, there's plenty of Christian books that answer this particular subject. It is a difficult question that people struggle with. I absolutely agree with that. Uh, there are numerous books about the subject, including why, you know, uh, why is the, why the suffering or something like that. Why Suffering by C.S. Lewis. I highly suggest C.S. Lewis was an atheist, an intellectual, became a Christian. Uh, as you probably know, he wrote a lot of fiction and he answers questions like this directly. So I suggest you, you go and you read that or listen to an audiobook like I did. It was fabulous. There was no need for Christ to be sacrificed. Uh, there, there is, if you presuppose the God and, and the Christian God and everything else, because we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, an all-powerful God could have just waved a hand and granted forgiveness. Well, you see, the problem with that is that the uh, the per people haven't repented. Okay, so if you just say, hey, it's all forgiven, there's two problems with the saying just it's all forgiven. Number one, it's not good justice. Remember, God isn't just loving. You're arguing from a perspective that God is all loving, and you're forgetting the part that he's all, he's holy justice. When a child has been murdered, there may be people who want the murderer off the hook. Maybe it's, it's the only mistake he's ever made. Please let him off the hook. But there's a family that wants to see him convicted because they can't take vengeance on their own. They have to hope that the judge does his job. And if the law says that person should go to jail or you know capital punishment or whatever, that's exactly what that family wants to see. And if that guy receives lesser or no sins, they're going to fa- feel that the judge is playing favoritism or that the, God, the judge is playing some other game. People want justice. It's really interesting to me how you guys will bring out the God is loving card, but when somebody hurts one of your relatives or hurts you and punches you or kills one of your family members, you want justice. You want justice as long as you're the one not being held accountable. Unfortunately, that's not the way justice works. Everyone's gonna be held accountable. So he can't just hand wave it. It's not a thing. He can substitute his son in your place. Blood, blood can be spilled of a perfect lamb, a perfect sacrifice. A lamb can be spilled, you know, can be killed in your place. But that wouldn't mean a whole lot if you weren't repentant because you would just continue to do it. Heaven was made with angels who, uh, you know, this was a place where maybe maybe sin couldn't even physically be done, but maybe maybe you could still think and have some free will because Satan took a third of the angels and, 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 and argued against God and were cast out. Uh, so the, the, you, you can't have a heaven filled with people that even if they were somehow magically stopped from doing sinful physical acts are still very hateful and spiteful to everyone around them. We want heaven to be filled with people who are truly repentant and truly want to live the way that God wants us to live. And he is not only at that point willing to forgive, but also willing to sanctify, willing to give you the the tools necessary to live that life perfectly in the afterlife. But you have to kind of also want it as well. There are there are at least one other example where forgiveness was granted without sacrifice. Uh, there is at least one other example where forgiveness was granted without sacrifice. Uh, okay. Where? I get. I guess. What kind of God would require a sacrifice in the first place? Uh, the God of the Bible. All the fundamental precepts of Christianity are just unnecessary if God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-benevolent. Again, you're forgetting all-holy, all-justice. You're forgetting that that little part. The, the, the love and the justice are two distinct elements of God, and you can't have one without 
the other and still call him God. Just, just isn't a thing. One big problem with the creation story, Adam and Eve, the flood, etc., it all came from early pa earlier pagan sources in Sumer and Babylon. They were plagiarized and reshaped for a new culture in Hebrew. Um, I was talking with somebody about this just yesterday and whatever have you. The gods of these stories were not tri-omni, so an Adam and Eve type could hide from the older pagan god in the garden. The older pagan god wouldn't know that they would eat from the tree. But when converting these older stories in the framework of Christianity, where God has attributed the triomni nature, the story stopped making sense. If your God is triomni, then original sin pointless. Death and resurrection of Jesus pointless and meaningless. Just wave a hand and either make those things, make it so these things couldn't happen or grant forgiveness in the first place. No need to create people capable of doing bad things. Um, so I've heard the argument before that there's earlier pagan stories with these elements and all this other jazz. Uh, I, I, this was one of the things that kind of shook me up a little bit many years ago. But I took the time out, did a big deep dive into a lot of these reports, and I found that many of them were misleading. The stories either weren't before the biblical times or the elements that they had in common were superficial, uh, you know, and the such. I will say that even even if there was some similarities and whatever have you, stronger similarities, that doesn't make me uh, doubt Christianity or anything along those lines uh, and whatnot. It turns out that when you have countless number of fake religions out there before and after and all this other jazz, you're going to have some characteristics in common. What you don't find in any other religion that I've looked into, however, is a is a is a god uh like you know the christian god so uh, i could probably do a whole video um, on the distinct nature of god and promising a heaven where you're going to get to worship him for all of eternity it's not the biggest selling point right uh, most of the religions promise you a paradise sometimes with virgins sometimes where you get your own planets things like that uh, gifts and prizes so to speak and, and christianity it's all about jesus it's all about god and whatnot so uh, it's not something you you make up if you want to attract a lot of people to your fake religion back in the day uh, there's other reasons to believe in in, in in the in, in the bible and the god of the bible such as the way the books of the bible are put together again check out evidence that demands a verdict by josh mcdowell and he goes into a lot of the detail and just even how the Bible, um, the different books work together, even though they're from so distinct different time periods and different authors. It's insane. Uh, I, I don't know how many other religions you know of that literally have 66 books from 40 different authors crossing thousands of years that, uh, that tell one uh, cohesive story uh, with uh, theology. It's all tied in together that you know millions and millions of people now um, follow we know for a fact that those are books of antiquity uh, from all these different time periods and these different authors and, and everything like that unlike say mormonism where they say hey we've got this book and it's from these ancient gold tablets and these gold tablets are written way back in the day by different people and you're like have we seen the gold tablets do we have any evidence at all that this that this that this writing didn't just come from this one man who was the only one to do the translations many many years later no we, we don't in fact the evidence that we do have when we look at the original writings seem to indicate he pulled it out of his nostril so um go figure uh yeah, let's see here uh if you could just hand wave is all you know if you just could hand wave this again your your argument presupposes that god's just all loving uh, and that he doesn't have any element of justice uh, in them, which I've already described. You can't even say you're getting objective morality from your religion. You're merely getting a subjective wins of your God as your morals. So objective morality is basically objective, meaning that I'm taking from an authoritative source outside of myself. Subjective means it's coming from within me. The authoritative source, uh, theoretically, could be subjective in nature and that 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 is that is the argument you're making but of course you know christians will argue god by his nature is the ultimate uh, justice the ultimate holiness and he's extremely authoritative when it comes to the matters of ethics so uh we, we believe that god is objective and he doesn't play you know favorites or anything along those lines um uh in that regard this same god in the old testament that commanded the complete 
genocide of people. Genocide. Um, genocide gets thrown around a lot. Uh, he commanded that groups of people were, were judged. I, I don't know. Geno, geno, uh, genocide. Hmm. But whatever. Regardless. Yes, of course. He commanded people to be judged. He does that every single day. There were earthquakes and and tempest storms and things like that and plagues and, and things like that that wipe out whole groups of people. It all happens on his watch, so to speak. And he does not shy away from that. We are suffering from a sinful state. We are constantly suffering the judgment of our sinful actions. We are all in broken bodies that will waste away and decay. Hey, I've got some news flash for you guys. God has done something worse than genocide. He's killed every single person out there, right? If that's your argument, that you believe God's responsible for it all because you want to shift the blame to God, the Bible makes it clear. We have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the consequences of sin are death. That includes the physical death and as such. Because we've sinned, we've allowed death to enter this world period. And so we all suffer the consequences of not only what we're doing and how we've sinned, but how other people sin. When a guy murders me, uh, he is killing me and he's hastening my demise and whatever have you. On one hand, I deserve sin because, uh, because death because I'm sinful. On the other hand, even if for some odd reason, let's say Jesus Christ Jesus Christ, no, I'm not Jesus, but Jesus Christ was perfect. He was still, he was still killed. Why? And he was still suffering the effects of sin. His body could be harmed. He, you know, he had all the frailties we had. He was ultimately killed. He was suffering the consequences of sin, even though he didn't sin himself, right? You guys want to attribute all of that to God instead of putting the blame on the people who are causing, you know, causing this. When we sinned, we brought death and decay into the world. That wasn't the way the world was originally created. That's what the Bible says. We did this, or Adam did this, and now we're all suffering, And but we continue to sin as well. And we all contribute. Anybody who's listening to this has, has sinned in any way and contributed to the problem. It doesn't even have the right to say it's not fair. But there may be somebody like Jesus that has not sinned and is still suffering, and it's not fair. But that's the nature of sin. It hurts people unfairly. And to sit there and say it's all God's fault when it's people with free will who have chosen to do that, that's, that's your prerogative. But it, it, it becomes a, a bit of a, of a, of a circular you know, argument. He contoned and gave instructions on how to engage in chattel slavery. Chattel slavery. Um, servitude and slavery was a form of commerce back in the day. There was a lot of uh, there's a lot of books and subjects and videos on it that go into much detail, which I won't do here. But again, uh, just to kind of give you the quick overview and whatever have you, we are uh, so in today's society we are usually most of us are working for companies like I do, and we are in a way servants and slaves. We have to do what our bosses tell us to do. Now we do have the right to leave whenever we want. Uh, there are some consequences for that. Uh, in certain jobs in particular, there are contracts you sign that say you can't get jobs anywhere else if you just leave uh, and whatever have you. Uh, there's consequences to your reputation, whatever have you. Back in ancient times, uh, they didn't have uh, quite the uh, capitalistic free commerce and, and dollar system that we had and everything else. So when you needed to provide for your family and you had a hard time doing that, one way was to essentially become a servant or a slave of a of another. And you would get into a long term is in essence, you know, contractual agreement to be their slave or their servant or whatever, and that they would be your master. And that gave them, you know, a number of rights over you and you were pretty well, you know, locked in for a time. The Israelites and the guidelines given to the Israelites were actually very progressive for their time in terms of how they were to treat their servants and slaves, because if you take a look at those around them, uh, they were treated much more harshly. The, the, some of the servants were so happy with this arrangement that, they, that when their term was up, they would want to stay, because there's passages in the Bible that talk about, and if the servant doesn't want to leave, 
uh, and at the end of their term and they want to stay and they want to be with you for the rest of their lives and raise their families with you because, you know, some of these people take very good care of their servants and it can be very hard to get jobs elsewhere and whatever. Uh, there was a process for doing the earring thing or whatever it was uh, to keep them because this was generally a good deal for some people. Were there slaves that treated people or were there masters that treated their slaves poorly in Israeli times? Absolutely. And the laws given by God just put some bare upper limits on that, right? It didn't push it to what we have today. They probably weren't ready for that. Jesus made it very clear that God doesn't like divorce, yet God allowed them rules for divorce in Israeli times because he knew that they couldn't stand living up to a standard. A tree can bend during a hurricane, but you push it too hard and it breaks, and God knew that. So, uh, God didn't give them the most perfect, highest standard. They couldn't handle his highest standard at all. If he judged them by that standard, by his whole standard of upper holiness, they would all be decimated before they even took one step. God judged the Israelites quite often and gave them harsh penalties for disobeying his word, right? So he knew that he, he couldn't give them the full enchilada right to begin with. And giving them the full enchilada you might think but it might have helped out those slight where would they have gone where would they have gotten jobs it's the same thing with a divorce right if you force people to stay into unhappy marriages with no recourse for divorce even though it is god's desire that none get divorced there can be consequences for that we all understand that so before you start shooting off comments you really need to do some research into historicity and stuff like that um, behind the whole, uh, you know, uh, slavery thing and how the Israelites truly treated their slaves and how they were commanded to treat their slaves. Now, there were bad masters that did horrible things, and God, again, would limit that to an extent and would have that addressed. Um, I would point out, before you pat yourself on the back about our modern methods, we have some really bad bosses here. It turns out no matter how many rules and how progressive our rules get, we get some pretty abusive bosses here. I've worked for them. My wife's worked for them. We've had some pretty bitter fights with some of them, and and they're still out there, boys and girls, because you can't legislate morality on that level. Uh, even in our more enlightened systems, it turns out you can't stop jerks, so, um, and whatever have you. But... Um, uh, but yes, uh, God's God's laws in the Old Testament were designed to pull things back a bit and to ensure some minimum standard, but it was nowhere close to his normal, you know, standard for how he wanted things to be. When you talk about getting rid of the slavery movement later on, that was largely in America anyways. Uh, that was largely led by Christians, Christians who were reading the entire Bible at that point and did feel that there should be more of an equalization because all are created in God's eyesight, God's sight, I should say, God's image. And so that's a holy Christian argument. With pure atheism, that's an argument that's a lot harder to really stand on. The, the, the Western value system that you have, which, mind you, it is a Western value system that says we shouldn't have slaves, that is strongly from Christian uh, origins as well, by the way. The uh, as we progress through the years, the true Christian movement has, you know, got more revelation from God and has been pushing, you know, their ethics to be more and more in line with God's word and his vision for things like that. I'll also point out that there are certain parts of the world that still engage with slavery. And ironically, and none of that has to do with race because you have um, African-American countries with strong slavery on other African-Americans. So African-Americans, gosh. They're not African Americans if they're in Africa. <laughs> More coffee, but you know what I'm saying. It is it is still a big, huge problem in the world today. By the way, would be my point. A God who decides to wipe everyone a flood because he felt bad over what he created, even though being all knowing before knew this would knew knew this would would happen and whatever have you. So, people parents know most parents know uh, people do bad things, and if you have a child. It's not a matter of if they're going to break your heart. It's a matter of when you still have the child. You still do, and you still have the child and still move forward, even though you know it's going to be tough, it's going to be hard, and tough decisions and things like that are are going to have to be uh, made and whatever have you. God made the angels, and he made Satan knowing what would happen. Again, I've already talked about why does, why does God allow that to happen. 
even though he knows it's going to create judgments, you know, or have him do judgments. Again, read the books. Read the books. There's different books out there where we're getting back into the same arguments again. A God who told his people to commit atrocities but is somehow loving and moral. Um, they aren't just atrocities. They're judgments, okay? A, a judge makes the judgment. He does have a right to tell the executioner to carry out the judgment here in the state of Utah, you know. So the judge makes the judgment. The governor has the right to uh, suspend it if, if he so desires. There are people involved in that decision-making process. They're not the ones necessarily always to carry out the, the judgment. Not consistent with an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-benevolent being. It is consistent with an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-benevolent, yet, yet all-holy um, being charged with 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 justice. Regarding religion as portrayed in Stargate, it is pagan faiths that are shown to be the most false. They were all started by the Gauld, except for Norse, which was started with the Asgardians. The Ori come close to the destructive conversion nature of monotheism. Uh, but even the show the Ori, not gods, but higher ascended beings that broke from other ascended beings, the ancients. The Ori felt that they should interfere with fields of beings and garner the power of worship to defeat the ancients who had a strict non-interference doctrine. I, 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 I get it. Science fiction. I haven't seen season nine, but I got the gist of the Ori pretty, pretty quick. Um, uh, if, if I didn't get it from just the clip and watching tons of sci-fi before this, I, I got it from the comments later. I've already commented just within this video alone, plus other videos, uh, what, what, you know, why, why I'm doing this, why I did this video, even though I understand they're not a direct stand-in for, for Christianity. So I get it. So uh, that's all the comments I'm going to going to do on this. Again, I encourage anybody who wants to truly have a conversation about this, reach this, reach out on me on Discord at JC Servant. Um, happy to make time in my busy day uh, as I can to uh, have these conversations with people who are truly interested in having adult conversations. And a uh, big shout out, by the way, I forgot to mention the the guy's name on there, but whoever did that last comment on there. Uh, this was uh, Uberod. Uh, thank you for that thoughtful. Uh, you are one of the more thoughtful written out comments, and I and I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. But this will be the this will be the last video on this. Uh, if you if you want to subscribe and tear me up, <laughs> no, just thoughtfully engage in discussion in uh, in a future video down the road. At some point, I'll get a hair up my butt. It might be years, so I am in a number of other projects right now. So this is not priority. This was kind of an off the cuff thing. If something comes to my attention, like the Stargate thing did and speaks to me, I don't know, wherever God leads me, I might do another video sooner rather than later and whatever, or it may be years. It's it's just wherever God kind of leads me on this. But like I said, I've got my hands in a lot of other pots, so I don't see that. So if you want to talk to me more about this, please consider just hitting on over to Discord and forwarding me at JC Servant if you want to engage in thoughtful dialogue and ask me some really tough questions and, and make your arguments and and, and, and I'm always happy to listen. I, I do like to listen to people and, and respond. But other than that, thank th for those of you who were adult about this and thoughtful and in your engagement, thank you for taking the time. Uh, but I'm definitely going to go ahead and shut down all the comments now and just kind of put a kibosh on, on all of this because I really can't keep up and moderate it and stay on top of it. Uh, and not to mention it does flood my inbox, which I would rather keep open for comments on the few other videos that I still get here and there uh, and keep that inbox kind of clean. So I think you all can understand that, but thank you all very much. And uh, I hope that God blesses you in all your futures endeavors and I'll catch you next time.